and welcome to chapter 4. Chapter 4 of the Sculpty tutorial, a multi-part, or excuse me, the Sculpty paint tutorial, a multi-part uh, tutorial that I've put together uh, because a friend asked me to do something for him and said he just couldn't figure this program out, and boy do I understand why I can't figure it out. Unfortunately, I've been working on this program for two years. No, I didn't make it, but I've been using this program for two years, and uh, I still only understand about half of it, maybe. Uh, but we're going to go through it page at a time and uh, keep moving. Uh, when I left you in Chapter 3, we were talking about the Stone Tool, and we had talked about the Randomizers and the Grid Pinchers and a Grid Extruder. These are handy tools that allowed us to create this interesting looking toy, dog chew toy thing. Um, sort of a koosh ball kind of shape. Um, I don't judge it, it is what it is. Anyway, uh, let's talk about these other tools here. Uh, let me snap us back to a sphere. Uh, goodbye dog toy. And uh, let's talk about pinching and extruding. Now these tools don't exactly work the way I would expect them to. Um, I do understand the concept of pinching. Uh, when you pinch a piece of clay, it gets smaller and longer. When you extrude a piece of clay, realistically, that's supposed to be the same as pinching. Uh, but if you were to sort of grab it from the ends and sort of stretch it out this way all the way around, that would seem to be what extruding does more, more of the time. It makes things bigger, whereas pinching makes things smaller. Now, the programmer don't know why he chose these particular words and the particular alignments. Uh, pinch to top, well, let me just show you what pinch to top does. We just pinched to top. Now, to understand this clearly, I'm going to do it a few times to see the shape that we're creating. Now, as I told you, we've got this resize sculpt tool, and this will allow us to sort of maximize it within its available bounding box. And you can see that what we've done is we've sort of created a pinch on the top and sort of made it sort of fat and heavy set on the bottom. Uh, the more we pinch it on the top, of course, the fatter the bottom gets. I don't understand why that's the case, but if we keep resizing sculpt, you can see that, in fact, it does get pointier at the top. Uh, again, if we were to do this with a plane sphere and use pinch to middle, this one makes a bit more sense, because while the top and bottom are getting fatter, the middle isn't. Uh, and it's getting more and more yo-yo shaped, I guess would be the, the phrase. Now, we resize the sculpt, you can definitely see it more pronounced. Uh, if we were to do this several times, pinch to metal, and then, oh, I hate that about this tool. Uh, one, of the th one of the annoying things about this program is that the rendering of the uh, preview is on top of the user interface rendering, so the model can get in the way of the buttons. Uh, periodically resizing your sculpt will keep that from happening. Uh, unfortunately, it does introduce some small errors into your model, which this program pretty good at dealing with if you tap in a, a couple of smooth functions there. Um, as you can see, this this is pinched to metal, uh, but the top and bottom have become very, very squished. I don't know what's going on mathematically there, but that's just going on. Uh, much like pinch to top, uh, pinch to bottom does the exact same thing as pinch to top, just upside down. Makes perfect sense, except it's not, doesn't seem like pinching to me. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, let's talk about extruding. Now, extruding to top and extruding to middle and bottom. Extrude to top, well, that does seem like pinch to bottom, doesn't it? That's the weird thing about this program and the words that he chose. Pinched top. Okay, here's pinched to top. That looks like extruding to bottom to me. And if we were to extrude to bottom, exact same result, just without getting bigger. Um, your mileage may vary, but that's a pretty confusing backwards kind of thinking to me. Extrude to middle, however, does pinch both the top and bottom and leave the the part, the middle part sort of behind and creates this ridge here, which of course you can smooth out 
and create football shapes. Handy if you need football shapes. Uh, especially handy if you were to do this sort of a shape here, smooth it out here, and then you decided you wanted to randomize it and make sort of a rock shape out of it. Then you could do that and you'd end up with a nice sort of overall top kind of shape to it. Anyway, let's go ahead and snap out of this because uh, the next parts are really important and uh, part of the reason why I like this page so much. Um, flatten top and flatten bottom, of course, uh, allow you to flatten the top or flatten the bottom. And the problem, of course, with this tool, while it is, I mean, it, it is perfectly flat right now, is if your shape is at all, you know, organic, this may not be as flat as you might prefer. Um, I don't know exactly what's going on with that tool or why it does that, but if we were to do this and smooth it back out, you can see it's got a nice warbly kind of top to it. If we flatten the top, you see we don't really flatten the top as much. And I think that has to do with the, what the row order and the number of things that are where they are. And if I, I really have no idea. I'm just talking to fill time. Uh, um, it's a handy tool, flatten top and bottom, when it works. When it doesn't work, you've always got undo. And there are quite a few layers of undo in this program. I don't know how many, but clearly it looks like it's about 10. Uh, so don't don't rely on it for forever. Don't don't expect to go back all the way to the beginning. Um, all right, let's go back to a sphere for a second and talk about scale plus and minus and bend plus and minus. Now this is of course plus and minus. I don't know why there's not a little plus sign and a little minus sign, but there isn't. Uh, scale of course allows you to scale in x. This allows you to scale in y, and this allows you to scale in z. Um, totally exactly what you'd expect those tools to do. Uh, of course, your axis is rotated and that really is, that blue axis really is the Z axis. So if you want to make it taller in world, you're going to need to work on the Z axis for that. So uh, let's talk about bend. In order to show you bend, I need to sort of make a, a, a bendable shape because the sphere well, you're not going to really get it very much. So let me go ahead and 5 and let me tap this in 5. Okay, now we've got this sort of almond shape here. And as you can see, if we use bend in the x axis, okay, this allows us to bend the shape. Now this is not rotation, as you can see here. It's actually sort of bending the shape somehow. This is not a, not a real finished tool and more often than not every time I've used it I've ended up with these little inverted uh, pinched areas that don't want to fill in properly after that um, sometimes you can sort of force it out of shape with some smoothing but you end up with these two-dimensional areas that are inverted uh, I don't know if you can really see that very well um, but in my experience, that's to be avoided because um, you can end up with some weird things there. And of course, if you try and bend a sphere, you're going to sit there and go, what's going on? And you're not going to understand it until you look at what's going on here. And you can sort of see that the sphere that should look like that is in fact getting bent like so. Very handy if you need a whole bunch of detail on this side of a sphere. Um, unfortunately, when the shape isn't spherical, it doesn't just move all the pixels over to one, all the vertices over to one side. And it looks like we're out of time for this chapter, so join me in chapter five. Sorry it took so long, but information doesn't always come easily.